Okay, so, so far the only kinds of exponential equations we've written are this type here, where the A is the initial amount, or the y-intercept, and the B number is that growth or decay factor. And N is the number of times the interval has passed, whether it's days or minutes or years. And again, we talked last class about why we're in this unit using n is greater than or equal to zero, it's because these are real life situations. We need to know the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is when x equals zero. But we're going to take a look at a new formula that's also exponential. And this is used when the problem concerns a percent increase or decrease. So you really have to read the problem to figure out which one you need to use. In this first example it says Sandy is studying bacteria in her science lab. She starts with three bacteria in her petri dish, so there's your A number. The bacteria doubles every minute. When you're doubling a quantity you are multiplying by 2, so there's your B number. Write the formula to represent how many bacteria are present in the nth minute. So that means write, write, just write the formula, raise it to the n power. And then based on that equation, let's find out how many bacteria there would be after 25 minutes. There is not one mention of percent in this problem, so that means we're going to use the typical exponential formula we're used to using. f of n is equal to the number of bacteria she started with times the b number 2 raised to the x power. So now to find f of 25, we take 3 and we multiply that by 2 to the 25th power. Now be careful, don't do 3 times 2 and get 6 and raise 6 to the 25th power. You have to take care of exponents first. I would, t I would simply just go into my calculator and type in 3, parenthesis, 2, parenthesis, raised to the 25th power. And when you do that, you see that there's actually 100 million 663,000 296 bacteria. So you can see how fast bacteria grows in 25 minutes. We are overwhelmed with bacteria. <clears throat> now let's take a look at an example where we are going to use this second type of equation. This one here. Example 2 says since 1980 the number of gallons of whole milk each person in the United States drinks each year has decreased by 4%. There's that percent decrease. That tips you off to the fact that you have to use the second formula instead of the first one. In 1980, each person drinks an average of 16.5 gallons of whole milk per year. So there's your A number. Write an equation to model the number of gallons of whole milk consumed since 1980. So in this example, we're going to say 1980 is equal to year zero. Then they're asking us to approximate the gallons of whole milk consumed per person in the year 2000. Well, 2000 is 20 years after 1980. So 2000 is year 20. So here's the general form of the percent equation. f of n is equal to the starting number, a. And in parentheses this time, you do the number 1 plus or minus the rate written as a decimal raised to the n power. Now, why is it plus or minus? Well, it depends on if it's a percent increase or decrease. In this case, it's a percent decrease. And by the way, before you can plug the number in for R, the percent must be written as a decimal. 
If you forget how to change a percent to a decimal, go to your calculator, take the number in front of the percent sign, divide it by 100, because percent means out of 100. 4 divided by 100 is 0 0.04. So that's what we're going to plug in for R. So F of N is equal to 16.5, because that's how many gallons each person drank to start with in year 0. And this time it's a decrease, so we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.04 raised to the n power. And we end up with f of n equals 16.5 times 0.96 to the n power. Now, you may just go from this step right to this step. If you remember that it's decreasing, so you have to subtract the decimal from 1. I usually write this middle step just to organize my thoughts and then I go to my calculator and do the 1 minus 0.04. A lot of kids will do 1 minus 0.04 and get 0.6. They make mistakes with the math so you may want to check that calculation with your calculator. So now we can find what the milk consumption was in the 20th year or in the year 2000 by doing 16.5 times 0.96 raised to the 20th power. And it said the approximate gallons of milk. And it doesn't say, and also to the nearest gallon. When you round something to the nearest inch or the nearest foot or the nearest gallon, you're not going to have any decimal points on your answer. So when I took a look at what 16.5 times 0.96 raised to the 20th power was, I got a decimal that looked like this. So my final answer here is going to be 7 gallons because 7.29 rounds down to 7 gallons and that would be to the nearest gallon. So when you come back to class after break, these are the types of problems we're going to practice. Have a wonderful week off, stay safe, be smart, stay out of trouble, and we'll see you next week.